Hello, fellow investors. Welcome to another episode of Ritter on Real Estate, where we teach you how to passively invest like a pro. Today, my guest is Eric Chatterton. Eric is a managing partner with Gibby's Capital Investments. Really, really interesting name. I'll have to hear the story behind that one. Um, Eric's based out of Houston, and he is rapidly advancing in, in multifamily and on his way already to 664 units here in the next week or so. So I think by the time this airs, those will be well under your belt. So excited to hear your growth story, Eric, and thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Ken. Excited to be here. You know, I've been listening for a while, so definitely looking forward to chatting and having some fun. That's awesome. I, I, I always lo love to meet listeners too. So this is, uh, this is a treat for me. Well, Eric, let's, uh, let's get into your backstory a little bit. So be before we dig in, you know, tell us who you are and how you got to be where you are today. Sure. So like you said, Eric Chatterton, I kind of, I grew up in and around real estate a little bit. You know, my family grew up in a family of real estate entrepreneurs that had you know, both single family and small multifamily buildings. Um, but part of the reason why I jumped into the multifamily space was because I, I, you know, my family, I felt like they were doing it wrong. Um, you know, they'd seen a ton of success throughout their life, but, you know, they were self-managing every single one of their properties, including the multifamily buildings. And I just saw them working their life away, you know, and they're in their 60s working 14, 15 hour days. And, uh, you know, I saw success in a different light. I saw success as something different. And I also wanted to help them get away from that. But, um, you know, I, I, you know, went to college at Boise State, go Broncos, uh, and got two degrees from Boise State and was in sales for 12 years before jumping into real estate. Had no previous real estate experience at all. Even though my family was in real estate, I just kind of did chores for them, never really learned about the business side of things. So, um, you know, a lot of different motivating factors to, to kind of push me in this direction. But after 12 years of being in sales and seeing a lot of success in, uh, in that space, uh, you know, I just needed something new to challenge me and stretch me and, and really make me better. And that's when I jumped into multifamily. So here we are. So I'm, yeah. And, and I mean, that it, that's, it's just such a common story, right. Of, this uh, kind of this this career and real estate becoming this this second career because you you realized what something was lacking in, in that first career maybe it was freedom maybe it was you know the ability to to just build passive wealth I mean a lot a lot of different things right but I, I think that is a common theme with folks um, that we have on the show it usually is kind of a, a second life right and mm -hmm. what what I think is interesting about yours is that you know, you saw your parents in real estate grinding away, like you said, 14, maybe 15 hour days, yet you chose to go into real estate. I mean, that, that seems like something, if I was looking at that, I might be like, you know, that, that seems like a lot. I mean, you're in sales, right. you're doing great, right? You're training sales teams. So what was it, what was it that you saw in real estate that made you say, you know what, even though these guys are grinding 14, 15 hours a day that, that that's what I want to do. Yeah. You know, I think it took seeing it from a different light, truly. Um, you know, there's enough things going around on social media these days where you can learn from a variety of people doing a whole bunch of different, you know, things within real estate. Right. And so yep. I think being exposed to, you know, some different avenues of, you know, earnings and, and winning in the real estate game really kind of inspired me, but the, the biggest thing for me was just their time. You know, they had, both, they both had nine to fives and they were both running these properties full time, you know, answering calls in the middle of the night, running and fixing mm -hmm. toilets, you know, shoveling snow. And we were in uh, Southern Oregon. So we got heavy snow. And really the only things that I did for them were shovel snow and mow lawns. And so, yeah, I don't know. I just, I hated seeing them work on that side of the business, work in their business, not on their business. And I really wanted to make a commitment to myself to find a way to, you know, build a platform and build a, a structure in my business where it could just work on it, not in it. And, you know, I found a mastermind group that I joined and I, I saw the way they were educating their students on how to, on how to do this. And I was like, man, this is wild. This, you know, you can do this without having to be grinding every single day at the property, you know, dealing with tenants and toilets and 
termites and all sorts of things like that. So I just kind of jumped in and learned from people that were doing it at the level that I wanted to do it at. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you, you realize, okay, this, you're, you're looking at your parents and saying, okay, there's, there's gotta be a better way out there. And, and there's gotta went, be a better way. You went, you sought out, you sought out some education, you found a mastermind mm -hmm. group through that. You were able, you were able to learn a, a different way of approaching things. So, mm -hmm. Sounds like a little higher level. Sounds like not, not self-managing. I mean, you, your parents, um, and not in any negative way, but, but we're kind of, sounds like the traditional mom and pop, right. Where they're right. kind of all, controlling everything, running everything, but, but it kept them, 100%. I like how you said that in the business versus being on the business. So you go out, you educate yourself, you find a different way. And not only has that had a pretty profound impact on your life, but it's also had a pretty profound impact on, on your parents' lives. Right. So tell me a little bit about that story. Well, you know, part of the reason why I did this is I, I wanted my parents to learn how to be passive. You know, they, like I said, in their 60s, still grinding, and they've worked their tails off their whole lives. And I just feel like they deserve to, you know, relax a little bit. And through some of the education that I got uh, from the multifamily mindset, Tyler Devereaux and Ryan Woolley, those guys showed me, you know, if you can tackle these large buildings, team up with people, surround yourself with people that have done this, then you can tackle these large complexes, 100 to 300 units, um, and which justifies having a property management company. And then also, you know, you're able to bring in passive investors, which is what I wanted to help my parents become. And you fast forward to today, my parents have sold all of their assets in Oregon, uh, which is a very tenant friendly state. And I'm in Texas. So they were, you know, happy to redeploy their funds into some of our deals, but they've now invested in several of my multifamily deals. And uh, it's, pretty cool to see what they're doing now. So that that's awesome. So you're able to use your education, show your parents a better way, get them out mm -hmm. of there, get them out of their grind, managing their properties. Now they're passively yeah. investing in your deals. That's pretty cool. I love that story. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's been cool. And, and you know, it was funny, right when I first joined up in this mastermind, my, <laughs> I had to have a pretty candid conversation with my dad. He's like, well, why would you do that? You know, I can teach you everything you need to know. And I had to tell him, I'm like, well, dad, here's the thing is I, I think they just do it better. <laughs> and not that you haven't done really amazing. Like it's incredible, but you're stuck in this old way where you have to be the one that fixes everything and, and does everything. And mm -hmm. just like you said, the, the old style mom and pop shop and there's better ways. And I just wanted to help them see that. That's awesome. And, and was, how, was he open to that conversation? Uh, it, it was tough. My mom was super open and she was very supportive. Dad took a little bit longer um, to get on board, but you know, now they've invested into three of my deals passively and they're, they're happy. So, they, so, so I'm they curious adopted the model. Yeah. I'm curious just because like, like I can imagine that would be a pretty, pretty hard conversation, uh, especially, you know, uh, with somebody that's maybe been doing it for 20, 30 years, right. In, in a certain way. Yes. And so, um, what, what was the, the tipping point where, you know, dad was like, okay, okay. May, maybe Eric know, knows what he's talking about here. Uh, and, and we really got him on board. Yeah. You, you know, it, it was a work in progress. It wasn't an overnight thing by any means. Um, you know, he started seeing some of my transition from when I started to, you know, where I was going. I started throwing out a little bit of educational content on my social media, you know, that gave a little credibility to him. He would see that, but really the tipping point um, was when I was getting into my first deal and my partners, my sponsors on the deal were actually Tyler and Ryan, the people that started the multifamily mindset. And, you know, I just, I honestly just picked, took the pressure off of me for a minute and piggybacked off of their success and said, Hey dad, listen here, the reason you don't invest in this deal because of me, obviously, you know, I, I'm your son. I'm still fair, very new at this. The reason why you invest in this deal is because of these guys look at their track record X, Y, Z. In fact, if you like, I can get set up a phone call with them and let's see if, you know, we can get, put something together and get you in on one of these deals as a passive investor. And that's what we did. Tyler and Ryan jumped on a call. They explained their track record you know, what they had been through, their properties, their wins, their losses, everything about their journey. And that kind of really resonated with my dad quite a bit. 
Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And that kind of is a, is a great segue in, into the next step of, you know, so it sounds like your growth, uh, which I, I think has been, been pretty tremendous since you got started, not, not so long ago, sounds like has a lot to do with which, without, which is what I think one is one of the best paths to get started, which is finding people who, who have done it before and, and leveraging their knowledge uh, and their track record um, to get going, right? Definitely. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I, I, I'm, I'm still leaning on people, leaning on partners, leaning on teammates, you know, on every single deal. And because, you know, uh, ha- tackling these large properties, there's enough good to go around. And if you can find people that you trust and you love, and you're happy to work with, and you continue to keep winning, then why change anything? So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think, I think that's awesome. So, now you're in Texas. I think you're mm-hmm. in Houston, right? Houston. And you got you guys are acquiring properties um, at, under under Gibby's. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, one I guess before I get into that, you know, I, I want to ask. I mean, Gibby's is, is not the common, uh, you know, whatever name capital or, or wherever you're at. So, where did sure. Gibby's come from? <laughs> um, you know, funny you ask. We get asked this a lot, both by you know, active investors in the space, but also some of our passive investors as well. Gibby's, you know, to put it, just call it how it is. Gibby's is just a sports bar in Denver. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah, so I'm, I'm engaged right now. I'm getting married in October. Um, Shout out to my fiance, Savannah. She's great. And, but my partners in my business, Gibby's Capital Investments, aren't just my business partners. They're also my future in-laws, Brett and Megan Davenport. So I'm working with family. We are the definition of a family operation. And, you know, as much as I was hesitant to work with family at the very beginning, it's proven to be one of the best decisions I've ever made. And, you know, I mean, you have to look at it, it could go one of two ways, right? It's either not going to work and you might mess up your relationship or it's going to work and you have a great life. So, and <laughs> that, you know, thanks. that is a, that is a high stakes partnership, man. That is, it you, was. Know, you got your fiance's parents as business partners. Uh, man, I mean, that's uh that's good. It sounds it sounds like everything is going awesome. I'm sure that could be extremely successful. But that that seems high stakes. It 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 was, and <laughs> so we tested the waters for a few months first, and we just worked really well together. We had the same morals and values, and they trust me. They looked at my track record of success prior to jumping in multifamily, and you know that gave them trust to work with me. And you know I kind of vetted them too in their experience, and we decided, hey, we all have different skill sets. And so we can all kind of come together and, you know, tackle this thing together. So Brett does all our acquisitions and underwriting. Megan has asset management and construction backgrounds. So she does our asset management and I raise in the capital investor relations, social media, marketing, content creation, and just overall brand development. Um, And together we form Gibby's, which like I said, is just a sports bar in Denver. But the reason why Gibby's came about was because we were trying to think of like what our new name would be. And Megan was like, well, what about Gibby's? And I was like, wait, you mean the sports bar in Denver? And she's like, yeah. And she said, that's where Brett and I went on our first date. And the craziest thing is, and this is how we knew it needed to be Gibby's, but that's the same place that I happened to take their daughter, Savannah, on our second or third date. So it was one of our first dates as well. And so we were like, oh, it's got to be Gibby's. Yeah. And I love that. I love that. There's a good story behind it. And uh, yeah. and it's it obviously is something that, uh, that interests people. I mean, I felt that I felt compelled to ask, you know, I I wanted to know, so clearly it's working. And so something that you brought up that I don't want to gloss over is, you know, so you found your path to success, you found mentors, you're able to leverage your mentors, and then you found partners and you found a team of people, uh, not just a team of people who, you know, you're not partnering with them just because they happen to be your in-laws because you knew them. It sounds like you guys have complementary skill sets in that you're not overlapping and you were able to, you've been able to kind of divide and conquer. And I just, that's another thing that I see so commonly as a theme to success. You know, it's step one, find some mentors. Step two, find partners and, and find partners where your skill sets complement each other. And so I think it's, it's becoming clear to me now how you've achieved so much success in, in such a, a short time. 
And so, so you're focused on capital raising, you're focused on investor relations, on brand management. And so tell, tell me a little bit more, you know, what, what that looks like, you know, how are you, how are you going out and, and raising brand awareness? How are you finding new investors? Yeah. And, you know, we're, st- it's still a work in progress, learning every single day. And we're, I mean, we're a year and a half in, and I still feel like I'm learning every day. And as long as you attack it, you know, life with this mindset of, you know, if you want to get better and learn from other people, then I think you can continue to grow. But the beauty is, you know, like I said, Brett does our acquisitions and underwriting. He is a numbers expert. Um, Megan does that stuff. I, I crave social interaction. I love to be around people and meet new people and learn about them and ask them questions about their life and their families and dogs, kids. I just like to know about people. And I like that concept of putting myself out there. Right. And so, but if Brett had to do that, he doesn't love doing that as much. And so, like you said, our, our skill sets do complement each other pretty well. There's not as much overlap. We can kind of stay in our own lane, which helps us to be able to move further quicker. You know, I think, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a saying, it's like, it, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think that's right. <laughs> Maybe not, yeah. but yeah, you got the yeah. gist of it. I mean, I get yeah. what you're saying. Then I figured but, it's like, you know, team up with some of these people and, you know, kind of what I focus on is I like to put myself in the room. I mean, I'm going to multifamily events every single month, several times, multifamily meetups. I, you run, you run one in Indianapolis yourself. So I'm right. going to those down up in Dallas and Houston. I'm going to multifamily conferences and I just keep my mouth open everywhere I go about what I'm doing. And usually kind of how it starts is it starts with me asking people about what they do. And then, you know, that kind of beckons them after they're done talking about themselves. Like, Oh, I've been talking about me so much. What about you? What do you do, Eric? Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell them about multifamily and tell them about the deals we're working on. And and that's kind of what starts the conversation. But I mean, I, I raise capital at restaurants, on airplanes, at all of these events that we go to conferences, meetups, virtual meetups as well. Um, anytime on social media, if I'll see somebody, any of my friends that are attending an event, usually you'll see it pop up on your feed if they attend an event. So I'll just go and I'll click attend and I'll usually attend as many as I can, as as many as I can just put myself in as many situations to, you know, find potential investors as I possibly can. Yeah. Right on, man. It's all, it's all about the grind and it's the only way you you get out there. Well, Mm -hmm. very cool. And, and I can you know, just relate to my own story. I mean, I can definitely attest to, you mentioned you want to go fast, go, go alone. You want to go far, uh, go with the team. And, you know, I've experienced that in, in my own career. I, you know, when I, um, I've had several different partnerships throughout my career, um, coming out of, of one of my more recent partnerships, you know, I, I had the mindset of, you know, I don't, like, I don't need to do that, that many deals. I, I could do a few deals and, and I can kind of keep, keep control, not have to share it. Um, And in that way, kind of just, just create maybe this more lifestyle business where we're doing a couple of deals a year. And, uh, you know, and and I think it's true that you can, um, you can move a lot more quickly that way, but, but it really does limit your growth. And and at the end of the day, I mean, that's kind of what I came back to is like, well, that was what I thought I wanted. It just didn't feel right. It didn't fit who I was because in the same way, I, I love working in teams. I just, I love celebrating w- with people and it, it's not so much fun to celebrate a win by yourself. You kind of turn around to give a high five and like nobody's over there. Yeah. And so it's, yeah. So now that I've, I've come kind of back around, um, Cause I've, I've had good partnerships and bad partnerships and, and sure. come back around to this idea of partnering and opening up and really um, allowing other people in and sharing the pie. I mean, my growth same way has been kind of exponential yeah. and not only yeah. not specifically even in the deals, but just in the people I've met and the conversations I've been able to have and, and how my network has, has built. And so it's definitely been a path for, for me as well. And so I just, yeah. I can attest to that, that, um, you know, that it really is, is the way to grow. It's to find good partners. It's to divide responsibilities. Like we all have a highest and best use, right? Mm -hmm. We we all have something that we are great at. And I think the people that are truly 
successful, the teams are truly successful are the teams that are able to tap into that and complement each other. And it sounds like, sounds like that's what you guys are doing. And, and that's just what, what I tell the listeners is, you know, I think, I think the two things you mentioned just to circle back, like find a mentor, success leaves clues, don't recreate the wheel, find somebody mm-hmm. that's doing what you're doing and figure out how to add value to them and, and become a part of their life. Whether it's paying with time, paying with money, like you're going to pay for your education one way or the other. Either way. Um, you don't want to pay for your education through mistakes that could have easily been avoided. Um, that, that's a long, slow path. The other is find partners, right? So, so that's great. So now let's, let's bring it back around to where you're at. So you, you've gone from, you know, people say zero to 60. You're going from like zero to six, six, like 660, right? As far as units. And you've done that in a pretty quick amount of time. So, so obviously these things are catapulting you, but can I tell us where the business is at and tell us about these 660 units and, and, and sure. what your guys' strategy is and, and kind of where you go from here? Yeah, so we're, you know, pretty, you're pretty average, you know, syndicators. We love the, you know, B and C type properties. Sometimes we'll look at an A, we have different investors with different investor appetites, but you know, we really target those value add deals. And we exclusively right now, um, you know, invest in Texas, our whole portfolios in Texas, we've got one deal in Fort Worth, and then our, all of our other ones are in Houston, Texas. So um, really trying to help people get break into this market. And we have a lot of our investors that like this market. So we, we keep, we keep investing here. We've got, uh, you know, we all live in Houston, all of my partners do. And part of the reason why, you know, go back to my parents for two seconds, that it's just cool because they're now, you know, moving to Texas. Now they sold all their assets in Oregon, which is great. They're moving to Texas. First time I've lived by them in 13 years. Right. But where the business is at now is, you know, we we're at a year and a half ago, zero units. We closed uh, in November on, that was 368 total. That was our second deal at 368. Right now, we've got two deals we're about to close on in the next week and a half, another 128 unit and another 168 unit. And then two days ago, we just got another LOI accepted on a 60 unit uh, that'll put us at 724 units once we close on that. And so... Yeah, it, it's taken off really quick. It's proven, you know, there's been challenges. It hasn't been sunshine and rainbows. And I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I don't ever try to paint that picture that it, this is easy. It is not. And that's why, I, you know, that's why I'm grateful for the, the mastermind that I joined. It's called Multifamily Mindset. They teach a lot on mindset. And I think yeah. that's super important because there will be hurdles. There will be challenges. There will be times that stretch you and challenge you and maybe make you want to quit. And if you're one of those people that just folds, you know, you might not, you know, see, see the fruits of your labor. Right. And that's why I, I love surrounding myself with other people because as strong as I feel like my own mindset is, well, man, there's times I get challenged too. And there's times I need help and there's times I need to lean on other people. And that's when you lean on your mentors, your coaches, your, your teammates, your family. And when you can do that, then it, it helps you kind of keep pushing through. So yes, we're very grateful, very blessed for you know, where we're at in our business, we're starting to get to that point where we're scaling. And right now we've kind of got a good problem. We've got more deal flow than we really know what to do with. Um, you know, we're underwriting a ton of deals. We've made, we spent a year just building phenomenal broker relationships out in our market. Mm-hmm. And that has proven to be extremely valuable. The one thing holding us back at this point is, you know, being able to have enough capital to fund the deals that we want to pursue. And so, usually what we'll do is if we find a deal, we'll team up with other partners that we can to, to tackle it. Yeah. And so are you guys syndicating all these deals? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. And so, yeah, that, I mean, that, that is a, a great question. You guys have, have ramped up so quickly. Um, how are you going about raising capital? I mean, is it, is it individual investors, the syndication or, I mean, how are you finding, how do you find the investor pool to, to bring into these 700 units? Yeah. Yeah. So similar to what I was saying before, I'm just always keeping my mouth open, but social media has proven to be a huge tool as well. Uh, You know, the more educational content that we put out, the more engagement I seem to get. Um, But not just that, it's just, you know, putting yourself in the room um, and also connecting with other partners that are doing this at a high level that also have the ability to bring some funds to the table. 
So on these deals, it's not just me raising capital. It's a full team effort. You know, we're all bringing in investors that we all have relationships with to tackle these things together. And sometimes we'll have two teams on it, you know, our Gibby's team and another team or our Gibby's team, another team and a third team. And, you know, together we tackle these things. So by, by no means is, is it all me, but, you know, we're learning from each, each other on every single deal. Gotcha. So expanding the partnerships even further uh, to different yeah, groups. Yeah, big time different groups to take down these larger deals. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. cool, man. And, and you and mentioned, and I, yeah, go I ahead. was just going to say, I'm also just starting to tap into the power of LinkedIn. Um, just learning the ins and outs of that and learning how to target and connect with multiple people within our market. You know, mm -hmm. you can target, you can get as granular as you want. You can even get to the point where you're targeting, you know, executive VPs of a company that have 10 plus years experience within, you know, X amount of miles from where you are, you know, you can get that yeah. granular if you'd like and request, you know, friend or, or, you know, ask them to follow each other and then connect with them over messages and just try to build a relationship and see if they've ever looked at investing in real estate. Yeah. Start the conversation. Yeah. I think I can attest that LinkedIn is an extremely powerful tool and, and, it, and it, the segmentation uh, is incredible to, to get really specific to your message. Right. And, I think the the balance is, which it doesn't sound like you're doing at all, is, is not spamming these people. But I think, like you said, niching down allows you to be specific enough to, to really give them a relevant message and, and something that's really going to provide value to them, right? Versus, I mean, you get a lot of these, I'm sure you get a lot on LinkedIn too, just the the generic, hey, want, want to connect, want yeah. to pick your brain type of thing. That stuff doesn't work. But it sounds sure. like the way you're approaching it really niching down and being specific, you can really give a, an impactful message to these folks. So that's and, awesome. And even, we'll, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and, and even if you don't get them to want to invest or anything right there, and then, you know, if you're still putting out some content to add value to people or, you know, similar to you in this podcast, how to, you know, with passive investing, just educating people on passive investing or, or what you're doing, you know, they're going to see that content eventually, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully. And if they do, if they see it over and over and over, maybe that'll inspire a question eventually. So, yeah. And I think that's the right point of view. I think, I think where people go wrong with social media is they expect like, oh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do a Facebook ad and I'm going to get all these investors. I mean, I, that, it's really not how it works. It's like, you got to think mm -hmm. about it as those are the people that you may build a relationship with now that are going to invest with you like three or four deals from now. Right. So you're always planning. You're always planning ahead. You're always bringing in new investors because it takes people a while to build trust. Right. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people and you know, some will, but not a lot that are going to come in right away and just say, yeah, we're ready to go. They want to see mm -hmm. you. They want to get to know you. They want to see that educational content you're putting out. Right. And that helps them build that relationship with you where they feel like they know you, they like you, they trust you. Right. And then exactly. maybe yep. three deals down the road. Now they're ready to go. And so, but I think that that priming is so important. It's so important to be putting that content exactly. out there. So, well, awesome. Well, Eric, um, I mean, just fantastic work, man. It's exciting to, to hear you. your story and how you've grown and leveraging your resources to work smarter and, and not harder. And so what what's in the future for you guys? Yeah, I think we're, you know, we're getting to the point where, you know, our Gibby's team, you know, might need to start expanding. Uh, we might need to start bringing in people to help. Um, you know, it's the first time in our, since we've been doing this, that we're working on multiple deals at once and, you know, we're tackling it fine, but it'll it'd be easier with a little bit of help. So we might be getting to that point where we might be starting to scale and, and grow a little bit more so we can keep hitting our goals. But I think just keep tackling deals in Texas and, you know, building a good footprint here and really building a strong reputation with, investors, brokers, and other active, you know, syndicators as well. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, I'm excited yeah. to, to continue to follow you guys and kind of see where things go. Thanks. So as we get into the end of, end of the show here, I want to take you through our keys to success round. There's four questions okay. I want to ask you. The first one is put your hat on as one of your investors. And if, if, you were going to invest in somebody else's deal. You could only ask them one question. What would that one question be? Um, 
That's a good question. Uh, I think I'd ask them about their track record. I would. I, I think, you know, challenge it. I'd ask them what challenges and struggles have you gotten on other deals? Have you had on other deals? Because I think you learn the most from your failures. And I think, you know, if they've been challenged and stretched and run into hurdles in the past, then they probably won't run into those in the future. So asking them about, you know, deals they've gone full cycle, what's your track record? And if they don't have much of a track record, make sure somebody on their team does or they're partnered with somebody that does. Uh, I, I think that's, that's what I would ask about their track record and, you know, what struggles and hurdles they've had to face on previous deals. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, I think you're exactly right. You, you learn more from your losses than, than you do your wins. And, and mm -hmm. hopefully those are things you're not going to repeat again. I mean, I, I know I've got some, I know everybody does. So if you've been mm -hmm. doing this long enough. Um, what are you most proud of in your career? Um, you know, I, I think that, I think this one's easy, actually. So uh, what I'm most proud of is tie it back to my parents, not my fiance's parents, not, not my business partners, but my, my actual parents, you know, seeing them work super hard and grinding, like I said, you know, 13, 14, 15 hour days. Um, I'm proud of the fact that now they've invested in three of my, you know, my last three deals that I've done. Um, they've since then sold all of their assets that they owned in Oregon and their home in Oregon and moved down to Houston where now they're retired. So I've gotten to retire my parents, you know, they bought a house out here. Um, dad bought a Tesla. He's no longer an active investor. He's got time. He's been riding his bike like he used to, like he loves riding his bikes. So he's been bike riding a ton and really my parents just have more time. They get to finally relax. And, you know, now they're making from their passive investments into my deals, they're making order, over a quarter of a million dollars just from the passive income, the passive cash flow, not to mention the, the equity when we sell. And so I think I'm really just proud that I've been able to help them get to that next point in their life to where they don't have to be grinding that much, that hard. That's awesome. And that is something you should be proud of. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's a book that everybody should read? Oh man, there's a million of them, but there's a couple that have really impacted me quite a bit. I think Atomic Habits is amazing, uh, especially just, I think it's just an incredible book. I've read it several times, but really there's one main one that has had a big impact on me and it's Failing Forwards by John C. Maxwell. Uh, it just teaches you to shift your mindset to look at failure as instead of a bad thing and, and, and actually seek out failure because of, just like what we just spoke about, people learn most from their, fail their failures. And, you know, they say the people that have succeeded the most and, you know, the wealthiest people in the world have failed more times than we've even tried. And so if you can just attack things and learn to look at every failure as a lesson and then try to apply it in your actual life, like, like, look at, you know, when I first, before I ever got my first deal, we submitted 27, 27 LOIs without getting one accepted. And so if I just didn't learn from each one of those, I wouldn't have gotten better, but instead you're going to the broker saying, Hey, what, what could I have done better to be a little bit more competitive in this deal? Can you give me a little guidance of how I could have been more competitive and earn this for the next one? You know, just trying to get better from each one. And I think failing forwards, John C. Maxwell, it's a good one. Yeah, nice. We'll make sure that the books are listed below so people can check them out. <clears throat> and lastly, uh, what is your number one key to success? You know, if, if you look at the theme of just our conversation we've had here, it's, it's surrounding myself with people that are better than me. You know, I, I wish I could take credit for the success that I've seen. I'm grateful for the success that I've seen in my team. But truly, I, you know, I give a lot of credit to the people that have taught me and educated me. And by surrounding myself with people that are definitely better than me in my craft, because, you know, you're the product of the people that you surround yourself with. And, you know, they, I'm not sure exactly what the saying is, but it's like, you know, if you hang out with four, you know, losers, you're going to be the fifth. But if you hang out with four millionaires, you'll also be the fifth. Yeah. And so I, th I think just putting yourself in the room, you know, join a mastermind group, you know, whatever it takes, f find a mentor and just surround yourself constantly with people that are doing this and doing it at a high level actively has been a huge impact on me. And then also just having fun. 
Yeah. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. You got to love what you do, right? I mean, that, that's the most yep. important thing in life, way more important than, than making a ton of money, loving what you do. And mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. Like you said, surrounding yourself with, with great people and, and really put mm -hmm. yourself out there. I mean, a lot of your story is you put yourself out there in multiple ways and you're getting paid back for that. I think that's, it's easier for some, uh, you know, maybe it maybe sounds like it comes pretty natural for you. Um, but I'm sure that there's still moments where, where it's uncomfortable, you know, and, and, but it's the people that, that do it and just show up and get there, uh, are the people that are going to be successful. And so I think, I think that that's, yeah, kind of why my, one of my number one things for people that want to get into real estate too, is it's a relationship business. And if you're not willing to get out there and build relationships, you're, you're never going to have success. You, you can only, you can sit behind your desk and, analyze deals all day but unless you unless you get out there and start meeting people you're never going to get a deal done and so great lessons great. eric i appreciate you coming on the show today if people want to learn more about what you and gibby's and the crew are doing how can they reach you uh yeah so i'm on all the social media platforms but the primary ones i use are facebook and linkedin um and if you're looking just to learn more about passive investing you know you can reach go find us on our website www.gibbyscapital.com and we also have a recorded webinar you can go learn more about passive investing as well www.gibbyscapital.com forward slash webinar and take a look at the video and see if it helps awesome yep. well eric we'll make sure all that's listed below so that everybody can click the links and get access and with that thank you so much for coming on the show today and hope you have a great rest of the day Thanks, Kent. You too.